My name is Hannah, and this is my Year of Less Stuff. Hey y'all, it's time for another video about new makeup releases. We are actually overdue for a video about new makeup releases on this channel. The last one I filmed was the one in which I anti-hauled everything in 10 words or fewer. I'll link that down below so that you can find it easily if you haven't seen it yet and you want to watch it. Today I'm just going to use all the words. I haven't talked about new makeup releases in a long time, so the ones that I have to talk about are just the ones that I really want to talk about. Like I just picked the ones from the past several weeks that stood out to me. And I also did spot a trend. I feel like there is an eyeshadow palette trend again, so I'm gonna talk about that as well. If you haven't seen the third video in my three video series about all the stuff I bought at Sephora in 2017, then you won't have heard the explanation of this space that I'm in. I'm not at home right now. I'll link that one down below too so that you can click through and just watch the first five minutes. If you're not interested in the video, just watch the first five minutes and you can hear the explanation of where I am. I don't want to repeat myself because I know a lot of you already know. But needless to say, I'm here. It's very hot in this room right now. I wait until the afternoon to film so that I could get some natural light. I'm working with a mix of natural and artificial light here. So my eyebrows might like melt off my face during this video. Don't judge me. I did do my eyeshadow today to match the topographical map of California that's in my background right now. I was editing the other video and I was like, wow, that was a real missed opportunity. So today I did not miss the opportunity opportunity. Let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. Can you imagine if my eyebrows really did melt off my face? Like if halfway through the video they both just started. <laughs> That's what it feels like. But that is probably not what's going to happen. What, what will happen is that the heat will soften the Patrick Ta Major Brow Wax and they will just start to kind of fall, fall like a sad souffle. We're not going in any particular order. I just picked out, again, everything that I felt like talking about. The first thing that's up here on my screen is actually a very new release though. It's the most recent palette from Melt Makeup, Melt Cosmetics. And actually this is maybe the least interesting thing that I decided to talk about. I just pulled it because it's a pretty palette. It's just announced on Trend Mood when I'm filming this. And the thing that I wanna say about it is just that we already have these colors, you guys. And I do feel like Melt is a little bit of a cult thing. Like people buy from Melt because they love the formula and they love the brand aesthetic and they tend to collect the palettes and they love the mattes and stuff. So I can totally see that if you are a total devotee of Melt and you like neutrals and you like these kind of mauve neutrals, then you would be really excited because you're like, yay, finally Melt is doing something that's a little bit more toned down, that's not super colorful. So I can see why some people would be really excited about this. But I don't have that relationship with Melt shadows. And so to me, I'm just like, whoa, this is a this is underwhelming. Like that's kind of my reaction to it. I'm like, it's very, very pretty. But as a person who's not really looking to collect more palettes right now, as a person who's really just focused on trying to use up and go through the eyeshadows that she has, this is an easy pass for me because it doesn't offer anything that I can't build out of my existing collection. And I think that that would be true for me even if my collection were much smaller than it actually is. Next up is something that I think is very interesting. This announcement on Trend Mood caught my attention, made me wanna talk about it, made me wanna pay attention to it, but not in the way of things that normally catch my attention. It's like it wiggled into my affections in a very niche way. It's the announcement of the new releases from CoverGirl. And the reason that I say that it's niche or maybe even surprising that this wiggled its way into my affections, into my interest, into this video, is that I am not usually compelled by announcements of new releases of drugstore products. I tend to get interested in drugstore products when they've been out for a while and they've kind of become cult classics. There's a lot of buzz around them. I see people wearing them and they look really great. But when drugstore products are newly released, I tend to kind of just gloss over it as I'm glancing through all of the announcements. This, however, grabbed my attention initially because of that embossed blush in the bottom left-hand corner of the post. Not just the embossing, but the color. 
this color of sort of orangey red blush is something that I'm newly really into, or it's not like the first time I've been into it. It's something that I've had interest in the whole time I've been interested in makeup, but very recently I've really gotten into wearing a super bright coral blush. And the super bright coral blush that I've really gotten into wearing happens to be from CoverGirl. It's the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Cream Blush in Flushed. It's something that I don't think I would have purchased, but Lauren gave it to me. She got it in PR and she gave it to me and I started wearing it and I am over the moon gaga bananas for that blush. It's one of my most worn blushes from the past couple of months. So I'm currently a true sucker for this color. I'm a total sucker for a beautiful classy embossing and I love the rebranding of CoverGirl. It really checks the boxes. They knew exactly what they were doing. They had me in mind as their target consumer when they rebranded in this slightly more minimalist and luxurious feeling way. So I saw this and I was like, CoverGirl, how dare you? CoverGirl, you shouldn't have. CoverGirl, look what you're up to against my usual tendency to just skip over gloss over drugstore releases I got drawn in by this and then because I was drawn in by expectations of a formula and a beautiful pan and this beautiful embossing because I was drawn in by that then when I remembered or when I kind of thought about the fact that it's CoverGirl and it's drugstore and so it's probably very very inexpensive then I was hooked and I was like, oh, I wanna go in store and see these products in store. I'm gonna keep track of them on Ulta and just see how people review them, et cetera, et cetera. It's the combination of the aesthetic intrigue and the low pricing. So I am going to be following the future career of this release with great interest. The Natasha Denona Bronze Collection, the moment that we've all been waiting for, or at least those of you who have been tagging me in this collection on social media, the moment that you have all been waiting for. But I'm also really excited to discuss it with you because I am surprised in some ways by my own reaction to this. And this is really case in point about how out of it I have been. I haven't talked about new releases in a long time and I've also just not really been tracking them or thinking about them. I feel like the announcement of this collection came and the palette was released and people were buying it and reviewing it on YouTube before I had even managed to like realize that it was happening. And it's, it's circumstantial because I've been doing other things. I've, I've been like up to my elbows in spider webs and lizards. Can you imagine if I actually was up to my elbows in lizards? I actually wouldn't mind that. As long as they weren't biting lizards, I would like pay a fee to just experience being up to my elbows in lizards. Not for a long time, not like for 10 minutes, but just like plunge my arms into a bucket of benign lizards, I think it would be worth it. So I completely understand why people were tagging me in pictures of this palette and in the announcements about this palette because I love a bronze eye so much and I also really like Natasha Denona and the gold palette is possibly my all-time favorite eyeshadow palette. It's actually what I use to create this look. It makes a lot of sense. The gold palette is kind of like a palette version of a topographical map, but I like bronze even more than I like gold. So this is purporting to be like the bronze version of the gold palette that I love so much. It totally follows that I would be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, clutching my pearls. I've never seen anything so amazing considering buying it with my budget, etc. But looking at the palette, I just don't feel that way. And I will tell you why. It's because there isn't as much texture diversity as there is in the gold palette. And even though I do love the golds and bronzes and the sort of bluey greens in that palette, the thing that makes it my favorite palette of all time is the intense texture diversity. And the eyeshadows that I reach for over and over again in that palette, including the one that I have completely panned and the one that I'm about to pan, I think I almost panned it today when I was doing this look, those are the ones that are the really slick, super glittery formula that's that's sheer. They're like these sheer, ultra textured, glittery toppers that I'm always using underneath my brows to blend into the look. And I'm also always using them all over, like as a wash of shimmer all over the eye. They're sheer, so you can put down like a really dark outer corner and a color on the lid, and then you can put those shadows over top of it and the color and the dimension that you've built onto your eye will still come through, but it'll all just look wet 
because of the reflections in that glitter. There are, I think, different degrees of maybe chunkiness in the glitters that are in here. So I think some of them are more like metallics, some of them are really, really rich, creamy metallics, and some of them are less creamy metallics, and some of them are sort of satiny and dimensional, and some of them are mattes. But I don't see any of those, what are to me like these precious jewels, these Natasha Denona sheer wet look toppers. And to me, that makes this just another beautifully curated palette in terms of the color story, just another beautifully curated palette that deals in beautiful muted reds and mustards and bronze shimmers. But I am, y'all, I am swimming in bronze shimmers. Like if you look through my entire collection, I have bronze shimmer upon bronze shimmer upon bronze shimmer. I don't need more bronze shimmers. I do love really unique textures and I might be seduced into purchasing some bronze shimmers if they came along with some other colors of that same formula from the gold palette that I love so much. But without that, this palette, I mean, I I'm tempted to say it's like kind of a snooze fest to me, but that's not exactly the case because it is very beautiful in isolation. So if I, if I didn't have any eyeshadow palettes and I was literally starting over from scratch, then maybe I would get this one. I feel like I could do almost everything I love doing with this palette. It's beautifully done. It's it's perfect in its way, right? Um, but there's nothing about it that's asking me to buy it. There's nothing about it that draws me away from my project of just trying to use the eyeshadow that I have. Weirdly though, there is something in this collection that does really interest me and that I've kind of gone in and out of feeling like I want. And that is the, the cheek palette because I I love this little compact cheek situation that Natasha Denona has started putting out. The Bloom Blush and Glow palette, the first one, I was sorely tempted to buy. And the thing that kept me from buying it was just that the cream blush, which I think was probably the thing I would have liked the most in there, was not my color at all. It was literally the last color I would ever want as a lip or a cheek product. It's like that really bright, deep, fuchsia magenta type thing and it's just not my jam it it doesn't really work with my coloring so I've been dying for her to come out with that same thing but in a more neutral sort of tan family color way and this is it this is like what I've been waiting for unfortunately she appears to have changed the formula of the cream products and the reviews that I've seen show them to be not really creams but more of like a putty type formula. And I don't feel as as interested in that. When I look at the swatches, they look a little bit like a, that dry putty. They look like super shock shadows. It looks like rather than two creams and two powders, it's two super shock highlighters and two powders. I would prefer creams. I want something really creamy where you can like wipe it onto your finger and then blend it into your skin. And then I have one other objection, one other thing that's helping me to talk myself out of buying or even wanting this palette, and that is that there's one shade in it that is unequivocally too dark for me to use on my cheeks. It's the one in the bottom left hand corner. It's like a really bright coppery gold. It is a stunning highlighter. It's so beautiful and I don't object to it being in the palette and I don't object to the palette on these grounds. I, I think it's great and I'm glad that it's in there because I think that a lot of people will get a lot of great use out of that. But for me, I would be buying a palette that has three shades that I can use on my cheeks and one that I absolutely can't. And I would love to use that time-honored claim that I would just use it on my eyes and I could kind of see myself doing that. I do frequently use cheek products on my eyes, but the fact that one quarter of the palette just wouldn't serve its intended use for me makes me much less likely to be able to talk myself into it. Aha, the other thing that you guys have all been tagging me in, the new release from Patrick Ta. How pretty is this? How pretty is this? I'm so, intrigued by these colors and the fact that the blush duos are cream and powder. Ah, it's so awesome. And I think that I've talked before about waiting for Patrick Ta's red lips to come out because I really admire the way that he as a makeup artist uses a really bright bold red lip. I've been waiting for this release from Patrick Ta, the, the cream blush aspect especially, and then the stunning 
bright red lip. It's the one that's in the color called Do We Know Her? Mm. Mm. Oh no, the lip is in the color She's Not From Here. And the cheek in that bright red coral is in the color Do We Know Her? So yeah, I look at this collection and I absolutely want it. I want two of the blush duos. I want She's So LA, which is the brown nude. And I want Do We Know Her, which is the bright coral. And then that lip in She's Not From Here is so stunning. And so is the lip in Oh She's Single, which is the nude. Just half of this collection is so up my alley that I can barely stand it. But I'm not really in the market for new lip products or new blushes with my own money. I could, in theory, get some of them to review for my channel, but I've kind of missed the boat on that. They've already released, there are already reviews of them and swatches of them online, and I don't feel like you guys necessarily need me to review these things. Like with the with the brow wax, it was a little bit different because that was a product, like kind of a niche product on which I'm kind of an authority, I guess. I mean, I haven't tried all of the brow waxes out there, but just the way that that product is intended to use, is intended to be used, is what I want from my brows and not everyone wants that from their brows. So I did feel like I was in a smaller pool of people who would have a lot to say about that product. But everyone wears lip products and blushes and everyone has a lot to say about these products. So if time goes by and nothing else comes up that I want to review for my channel next month and you guys want to see me review these specifically, maybe I'll get one or two to review on my channel. But I have a feeling that the passion that I'm experiencing over this collection right now is one of those passions that will be dampened with the passage of time. And that when this collection is no longer freshly released, when it moves out of the limelight, I'll be able to just let it go. The Fenty Slip Shine Sheer Shiny Lipsticks. These were just released. I pulled them up to talk about just because I kind of want to acknowledge that my taste in lip products has moved into this realm. I, I think not that long ago, I was up here being like, I don't need any kind of sheer shiny lip product. I either want like a good strong matte or a gloss or bust. Like I, I feel like I said that not that long ago. And now I'm up here being like slip shine sheer shiny lipstick all over me. Like I just, it looks gorgeous. I'm not gonna buy these. I do, it's true that I don't need something like this. I, I feel like you can get a similar effect with a gloss. It's basically a gloss stick and also with chapstick mixed with a little lipstick. And I, I do end up with lips that look like they have a product like this on them all the time. And that means that I already have the means by which to create that look on my lips. So I looked at this release and I was like, excellent choice, great timing, people are gonna love it. I would love it if I was buying more makeup right now, but I'm not actually going to buy this. It's not really gripping me by my heartstrings. Let's talk about the Urban Decay Naked Ultraviolet palette. This palette has purportedly been sent to me in PR, but I'm not at home right now, so I hope it is there when I get back, and if it is, then I will immediately make a video with it. I know that I won't be first out of the gate like people like to be on YouTube, but I will totally do some looks with it, I'll review it, I'll spill the tea. I'm very grateful to them for sending it to me. I, I'm on the Urban Decay like second or third string PR list. Like they send me things every once in a while, but they don't send me all of the releases. I'm the most interested in the duochrome and shade shifting colors that are purportedly in here. So it says 12 shades with mattes, take them or leave them. I mean, I can take or leave purple mattes. I do own the Natasha Denona Lila palette and I almost never make a purple look with it. I make like purple adjacent looks with it, but the bright purple mattes and shimmers in that palette I usually don't use. So I, I think that for me it'll be the neutral side of this, the purple adjacent or the purple supporting colors that interest me the most. And one of them is like a rich shade shifting like red to purple to green kind of thing and then there's that very unusual topper which is supposed to change the color of the shadow underneath it it says that it has metallics and mattes which i'm kind of whatever about and then holographic shimmers so it remains to be seen for me whether these holographic shimmers do light up the eyes and light up my life in the way that some truly extraordinary eyeshadows do if they hadn't sent this to me in PR, I would definitely not be going out to buy it. I would just be kind of like 
academically interested in other people's reviews of it. I do like purple eyeshadow, but I have enough purple eyeshadow to make a purple look if I want to, and I haven't really been drawn to purple lately as an eyeshadow color, so it's not quite timely for me, but it will be fun to play with. Stay tuned. The Sol de Janeiro Boom Boom Scrub. I just put this in here because it's the kind of thing I would totally have bought in 2017. I just finished filming that video about all of the stuff that I bought at Sephora that year. It was totally relentless and really put me back in that headspace. So going through these new releases, it was easy for me to spot the ones that I am pretty sure I would have bought if I hadn't made the changes in my habits that I made with my no buy year. And this is one of them because I, I like the Sol de Janeiro signature scent and I love a body scrub and I purchased extremely expensive high-end body products with absolutely no compunction during that year. I bought them in the way that I was buying high-end skincare. So this is the kind of thing that past Tana would have jumped on and that I know I would probably go through in like two weeks because when I use a body scrub, I'm not using just like a finger full. Like you can't cover your whole body in a finger full of body scrub. You have to use like kind of like a half handful or a handful depending on how much you want to get in there, how scrubby you want to get. And there are only like three handfuls of stuff in this little jar. So the cost benefit analysis is just so, so bad for a body scrub and I'm, I'm definitely not gonna buy it. I'm sure I would love it though. This is the kind of thing where I'm looking at it and I'm like, if I were a rich girl, I would buy this because if money were no object, it would be at the top of my list. Oh, this is interesting. I pulled up this release from Ritual de Fee. They're coming out with a new product in the little pot. I do have one cream blush from Ritual de Fee and I really, really like the formula. This is a brand that I'm very drawn to. This appears to be some kind of um, balm product. So it's a, a multi-use richly colored balm. So you can use it on cheeks and lips, but it's going to be more of, I, I guess, like an oily formula. So probably not something that sets down or, or is dry the way that their cream blushes become on the cheeks. So that would deter me um, if there wasn't an even greater deterrent for me, which is that there's not a color here that I like for this kind of product. So all five of the colors are quite bright and I prefer sort of like a muted, uh, well, the pink, the pink is more muted, but it's very pink. There isn't like a nude or a brown nude in this collection of five. So even if I was interested in the formula, which I'm sorry, I kind of elided over it, but I think the reason that I wouldn't like it is that I don't like things that stay oily or sticky on the cheeks. I like cream blushes that then sort of set or dry down. It looks like this isn't that because it's a balm. It is beautiful though. The release is beautiful. All of these product shots are, are very attractive. And it says that 100% of profits from this limited edition advance release will be donated to Black Lives Matter, the ACLU Foundation, and the LGBTQ Freedom Fund, which is totally awesome. And reminds me to tell you that the Black Lives Matter banner that I made did sell on eBay. A lot of people bid on it, which was so exciting, and it ended up selling for $870, which is so awesome. I am actually going to donate a full $1,000 to Beam, which is the organization I decided to support with the sale of that banner, but I can't do it until I get back to LA because I have to mail the banner before the funds will be released, and then I'm going to go ahead and make the donation, and I'll absolutely let you guys know when that happens, but I wanted to update you on that because it is very exciting. The auction ended while I was up here in Northern California, so the timing wasn't amazing, but it was amazing to see so many people bidding, and it is amazing to be able to make that donation. Let's talk about this NYX palette. I just had to put this palette in the video. It's the NYX Ultimate Utopia. I think it's so pretty. I just think it has that something something. It has that je ne sais quoi. It has it. It has it. I am stunned by this. I'm not going to buy it. I'm not interested in buying it because I don't want another eyeshadow palette. I've never tried NYX eyeshadows and I don't really have a motivation to try them because again, I, I feel like I have all I need in this realm. I just needed to appreciate the color story here and, and what they've done. So I'm looking at it and it's like, you look at it and you see these 
rich muted tones. So they're like tertiary colors, primary colors that have been mixed with each other and then mixed again with others and then maybe mixed with some grays or some browns, mixed with white or black to, to mute them, to tone them down. So we've got this teal, which reminds me of the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette, but the whole thing isn't a dupe for the Metropolis palette, it's just that they kind of dipped into that. I feel like that teal is distinctive there's a very beautiful mustardy brown in the bottom row that's very distinctive. There's also some really deep shades, like a black, a really deep brown. And it's all interspersed with plenty of those neutral warm tones, those sort of peaches and oranges and pinks that people like to balance out these other colors. And then the creme de la creme, the cherry on top, this bright matte periwinkle blue in the upper right hand corner. But that's not all. There's another matte gray blue that's similar to it next to it and a lighter gray matte that's also next to it. There's like this little neighborhood of pale sea and sky and seal colored mattes in the upper corner with a few incredibly bright looking, textured looking, glittery shades scattered throughout. One bronze, one gold, one gunmetally silver. I just mean Whoever they have hired over at NYX who put this business together is living their best life. It's so good. Someone has killed it with this palette. Someone is, I hope, being very well paid. I just look at this and it gives me hope. It's a work of art to me. I feel like I couldn't have done it better myself. And again, I'm, I'm not gonna buy it. I'm just here to appreciate. Aha, with the next post that I'm going to talk about, we are moving into the trend that I have spotted. I have one, two, three, four, five eyeshadow, eyeshadow palette releases to talk about that they all feel are in this same realm. It seems to be the palette trend for the summer that's emerging the most clearly at this point. And I think what I want to call it is rainbow with neon. It's like a neon rainbow idea. Not all of the palettes though that I want to talk about as fitting into this trend necessarily have true neons in them. Neon, I feel, is a bright color that's been moved a little bit on the spectrum. So if you look at a neon pink, it's like we have pink. If you think of pink, there are all of these pinks. And then neon pink is kind of like over here. It's like a it's like adjacent to most pinks. It's still a pink. It's not pink adjacent. It is pink. But it's also different. And I feel like these rainbow palettes that I'm looking at that I'm about to show you and talk about one after another, these five palettes, all of them are brightly colored and they have a bunch of different types of color. So there's stuff that's in the pink family, there's, there's shadow that's in the blue family, there's shadow that's in the green family. A lot of them have shadow that's in the yellow family, shadow that's in the orange, orange family. They have shadows that come from a bunch of different color families, cool and warm all mixed together. But most of the colors aren't primary or even secondary examples of that color. They aren't like the central or the most obvious examples of that color. They're all kind of just like adjacent to the color family that they represent. And many of them in a couple of these cases are adjacent to that color family by being neon. So maybe the most emblematic one, the first one that came up when I was clicking through is the one from Kaleidos. Kaleidos just released this huge collection and the palette that they released with it, almost every color has the quality that I just at great length tried to describe. So in the upper left hand corner, we have this really fluorescent violet. It's like an ultraviolet shade. Then next to it, there's like a really bright orchid shade. The whole top row are these neons. But even the other colors, like the coral on the bottom, the greens, they, again, they aren't like in the center of, they aren't in the gooey center of the realm of coral and the realm of green. They, they have like character. They're just, they have a little wink, wink, nudge, nudge going on, each one of the colors. And you put them all together and you get this kind of comforting, easy on the eyes, and yet also bright, cheery summer palette. I clicked on this Morphe glitter palette as another example. It's basically just a rainbow glitter palette. I mean, it has it has pink, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And so this is closer to just a regular old rainbow than the other one that we were just talking about. And I think that they're probably pushing this as a pride, like a pride month release. 
but I still feel, and maybe this is partly because they're glitters, that all of them are slightly off color. So there isn't a red, there's a kind of a rich pink, it's not a traditional true red, they've used something else to hold down the red for it, and then they also have a light pink in there. And then the green and even the blue, the light blue and the dark blue, all of them are just a little bit something, like a tiny bit grungier than the regular straight up rainbow colors. But um, I'm gonna kind of skip through this one because it's it's not as good. Now I'm looking at the pictures I see, it's not as good of an example of the thing that I'm trying to talk about as I thought it was to begin with. Although looking at the swatches, it doesn't look like a rainbow at all. And that's kind of what I'm talking about. These like rainbow-ish palettes that when you swatch it out, don't actually look like rainbow palettes. So maybe it actually does fit. Maybe it's actually on this train. A really good example is the Morphe and, what's her name? Maddie Ziegler, the Morphe and Maddie Ziegler collab. So it has the air of a rainbow palette, but the red, there are two reds and one is like a terracotta instead of a red, and one is like a almost corally pink instead of a red. There's a yellow, but it's like a really bright, vibrating, fluorescent, lemon yellow rather than being like a flat golden rod yellow. There is a blue, but it's like this bright sky blue with a little bit of shimmer in it rather than being like a basic blue. There's a dark blue, but it's a royal blue, again, rather than being like a colonial blue, rather than being like a straight up princess blue. There's a green, but it's like this really lovely, uh, I don't know, it's like the color of green paint that you would paint a fence. It's like that flat, off teal green. There's no lime green in here, even though Morphe's been throwing lime green in everything. There's no forest green, there's no muddy green, there's no like olive green, none of that. There's just this one weird, slightly off teal. You put it all together and it looks rainbow-esque, it looks slightly rainbow-esque, but if you actually look at the individual colors, it's rainbow adjacent. And it, even though it doesn't really have a fluorescent in it, although the yellow and the red, you could kind of argue, it gives me the same overall feeling as the first palette we looked at, the one from Kaleidos that was full of neons. I feel like it's another car on the same train. And then curiously, these YSL palettes that have released, it's the same thing. Like you look at it and it, if you glance at the little picture, they've got every color under the sun in there, right? You think that when you look at it, you're like, oh, together these make a rainbow. But the same thing is going on. The green is a teal rather than being a green. The red is a coral rather than being a red. The blues have distinction. The colors all have distinction. They all just have a little bit more personality than your average rainbow. And I appreciate that. These palettes don't exactly read as grungy, but I do think that they're closer to grunge than straight up primary rainbows. And then the last one that I wanted to talk about, it's the maybe the most different from all of the others that I just talked about, but I still think that it's worth putting under this umbrella. It's the new release from Kylie Cosmetics, which I, I've never bought anything from Kylie. I've never even considered it. I, I just don't get it. I don't, I, I don't follow her. And so I only ever assess her makeup just at face value for the color stories. And this one is beautiful. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And again, I feel like it has a red, an orange, a yellow, a green. It doesn't have a blue and that's what's keeping it from reading as much as a rainbow of as much as it's keeping it from reading as, I think the sentence I'm trying to say is, it's keeping it from reading as, as much of a rainbow as the other palettes that I've talked about. <laughs> it's keeping it from reading too much that way because it doesn't have a blue, but it has all of the other colors in the rainbow besides blue. And so it's still giving me those same vibes. But again, all of the colors are slightly off the mark. They're slightly off center. That purple is a really unusual, like pinky purple. And the green is very different. The limey, bright metallic is very different. Altogether, it is on that train. It's part of that trend. I enjoy noticing these trends and talking about them. I really enjoy bringing it up when I feel like there are a bunch of different palettes that are, are all being released at the same time that all look like they kind of grew on the same tree. I'm just fascinated by 
trends in aesthetics in general right now and throughout history. It's something that I enjoy thinking about. But there's an even more noble purpose for bringing it up, which is just that if this is gripping you, if you're looking at all these palettes and all of them are just making you pee your pants, then it's good to stop and be like, what is it about the palette? To like dismantle the idea. I think it's too easy to be seduced by the idea of a palette without probing into what it is that's seducing you. Like, why is it exciting? So when you start talking about a bunch of different palettes all having the same characteristics, in a way you're unpacking the characteristics of any one given palette that might be drawing you in that's on that train. And in doing that, I think you can more easily identify whether it's something that would be smart for you to purchase. And you can also more easily identify the makeup that is already in your existing collection that could potentially do the same job. So if any of you have been gripped, have had your heartstrings gripped by this like off rainbow or like slightly left of the rainbow or neon rainbow trend, but you're not gonna buy any of these palettes because you already have makeup that serves the same purpose, let us know in the comment section down below what that is and let us know if there are any other trend trains that you've spotted recently. Thank you so much for watching this video. I am going to go now. It is getting really hot in here. I need to close the shades and open the door and just get some fresh air flowing through. I appreciate you for being here. Um, stay tuned for more videos coming soon. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourself today so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.